Hello and welcome to another edition of our Power BI Monthly Digest. This is Manuel Quintana. And I'm Devin Knight. And we're here to talk to you about the October release, which, you know, it's, it's, not, as, uh, ro- it's not as large as right. the previous one we've done, but there's some really cool user enhancements, kind of quality of life changes for sure. uh, in the interface there. Uh, but we do have, we're kind of saving it for last, right? You know, last little present to unwrap. Um, a, a little more of a robust feature, something that we've worked with in other technologies, and it's pretty cool. It's in, in, the, in the realm of um, the query editor. I agree. Yeah, so. that, that one's really cool. I think mm-hmm. you guys are going to enjoy it. Uh, if you've done some data quality stuff in other products, you yeah. might see some similarities with, you know, how that might work. But uh, let's start off with some of the more simple stuff first. We'll build sure. our way up to that. So what, what do we got first? Well, what we got is a real simple example. It's going to be kind of, uh, I guess we usually categorize these. This will yeah. be more in the report side of things. Okay. okay. So we're going to be looking in this section in Power BI in that right-hand corner where uh-huh. we have the various scopes of filters. Okay. So, you know, you have your visual level filters, your page level, your report page. They've added a little bit of enhancement there. Mm. Yeah. So what it is now, and we're going to show you this, is we have this capability to search within them. Okay. So in the filter section, I can actually search for So the thought process there is I have a lot of yeah. different distinct values that are in that filter area. And rather than me having to scroll through to try and select one to filter, I can search now. Exactly right. Okay. So it, before where it was just basic and advanced, now you're going to see you get this nice little, little magnifying glass. Uh-huh. And it is contextual, right? So whatever you type in, it'll find that piece of what you've typed in. Okay. And it'll filter that down, making it a lot easier. Like you said, when you've got that larger list, right. making it easier to move through it. All right, let's take a look. Yeah. All right, so we have an example today that's already kind of partially built here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to select the one visual that I have, the, col- the column chart that's here. And I have already brought in an item into the filter area down here in the bottom. So you can see page level filters. I have a page level filter based on the product name. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I were to hit the little down arrow here, you have the traditional way where you could actually filter this visual based on, or really this page, based on this value. But what's different now is you see, like Manuel mentioned, this little magnifying glass that mm-hmm. allows you to now search. And maybe I want to find a particular type of bike in this case, maybe a road bike. I can type in road, and it's going to return back all of the items that have the word road and the product name. So it makes it a little bit easier to be able to find things. And it's just a nice little usability enhancement prior to this. You didn't have this, and if you wanted to select a certain value, you had to scroll through until you could find it. So nice little added feature. Really as simple as that. Nothing more to show there, but it's a nice one to now have available for us. And, you know, it goes without saying, but just in case naturally this, um, you know, this option is available there for your, your categorical fields. Yeah. So if you're kind of looking at for it in some sort of metric and the magnifying glass isn't there, it, it shouldn't be there, but just wanted to mention it just in case. Sure, yeah. sure. So one thing that I think people are really going to be excited about is mm-hmm. they've been waiting on some changes, hopefully, uh, and they're going to get it this month, to the DAX editor. Yeah. Yep. So... Yeah, go ahead. It's going to be uh, really for those keyboard aficionados. Uh-huh. You know, those guys who, you know, any individuals who love, you know, that coding, you're tabbing, you're hitting your, your, your shift enters. But that kind of is where the functionality ended, right? Right. You didn't really have much else beyond that. You were, you know, entering, using the mouse, getting back to where you wanted. <laughs> but now you can live in the keyboard. I like it. Yeah, I you like can completely it. go through it. So we've got a ton of keyboard commands here that allow us to more quickly and easily design and develop our DEX code. All right, let's take a look. Yeah. So I have created a second report here to really highlight some of these hotkeys that you might want to use. You can see all of them listed here. And I'm going to show you a few of them, and we'll kind of talk us through them as yeah. we go through them. And I'm hoping, this is my hope, Manuel, yeah. is, and this is a, a, a measure that I've already created, you can see here, that we can work our way through. But I'm, what I'm hoping is maybe this is a first step to open the door to some additional capabilities in here. So, so one of the things I'm hoping for that we've seen in other tools like mm-hmm. Power Apps is there's an option here to automatically format everything for you. Yeah, that'd be nice. So I'd like to see a button here where I could click it, and then it format everything automatically for me. Don't have that yet, but hopefully it's coming soon. And, and we've seen that there's like some outside sources where you can like put your DAX code in, and it just formats yeah. it, which is great. So that would be awesome. I do think you're right. I think this is the beginning, and we'll see more in here because, I mean, DAX is, is key here. Everyone yeah. loves DAX. So we've got quite a few options. So we've got three lines of code here, and you can see some of these are going to be more straightforward, like you'd come and know and expect. But other things, like starting right off the bat, if you just hold your shift key, alt, and you go up or down, 
mobility. You're moving, and you're moving a line up and down. And in this, this case, my mistake, I did, actually did the second the one. He got I excited. Did, he added the shift in there. I but did this shift awesome. all up and down, but what you can see here is it's, it's copying it up or down, depending exactly. on where you do it, which is fantastic. And then the alt would simply do the exact same thing, but it's simply just moving it. Notice it actually is kind of, it's not just moving all three lines of code, it's moving the line in question down, which also probably should mention, there are lines, there are uh, lines now, numbers that for each yep. line of code. So yeah, you can see, let me zoom in on that for a moment, you can see the numbers appearing here, and also on the far right hand side, you'll see this little indicator here that shows where you are in your code, where, where your, your cursor is in the code. So if you have a really long DAX statement taking up multiple lines, this will help you be able to navigate through and find where you're where you're at. Mm -hmm. All and, right. And what you're saying, some of them are, some of them you're familiar with, like Control Enter. That's pretty standard. But things like jumping to match, matching bracket could be pretty effective, mm. right? When you're working within that code, wherever your cursor is, if you go ahead and you use Control Shift Backslash, this will go and find the next sequence of. Now we have matching brackets listed. But it went, in this case, it did go to brackets, but if right. we went outside, it would actually go to the next, basically, pair of, in this case, parentheses. Yep. And it'll let you navigate and kind of just bounce between the, the beginning one and the end one. So definitely some scenarios when you're doing a bunch of nesting and different things that this could absolutely be useful. That's a, that's oh. a great one. I like that one. Mm -hmm. All right. What do we got next? Really awesome one. Uh, also, of course, is Alt-Click. Oh. This one I really like in the mix. So we can see our cursor is currently right now at the end of line three. Mm -hmm. Now if we hold Alt and then we click and let's say in line two. Oh, let's do the right key here. <laughs> All right, there we go. We can see, uh oh, there's two. And if we do it, now we have three cursors. And now whatever Devin types here is going to be input across the board. Ooh. Across all three. That's so cool. Maybe if you're going to do a little bit of annotation at each line or you know you're going to do just some similar functionality between all of it. You can do it, and you can pick and choose. Naturally, this is a, um, a DAX expression here with three lines, which we know you'll probably have ones that are more complex, and this right. could definitely come into play here. So an idea would be maybe if I change the name of the table and I need, needed to come in here and correct that, I could actually say, let's click in front of each of the tables. Mm -hmm. Oop, let's click it right there. Uh-oh, this could be interesting. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but idea, the idea here is I could then type, so this is not going to be perfect, but I could type in the name of the table name change, yeah. and it should impact it there. That's pretty cool. I think that's a neat one. Like I said, non, non-traditional like the other ones. <laughs> and then you have kind of this combination. Um, in the bottom here, we have Control-Shift-L and Control-F2. Uh, situational, the idea is if you're wanting to pick like a very specific Mm -hmm. two, three characters out of something, and you just want to find where that exists throughout, that's going to give us that capability where we can go and do that. Let's, oh, man, the hotkeys, I'm bad here. Let me do the right ones. Control-Shift-L, there we go. And you can see all instances <clears throat> of R-N-E-T, Arnit, uh, <laughs> is, uh, is located in Discover Force. Once again, at this point, you know, do we want to remove it? Do we want to copy this out? You know, whatever we need. Now all of it has been highlighted. I like this one too, the indent uh, option. I thought that yeah. was pretty cool. So I could do kind of a find a section here that I want to indent and do control and start indenting some. I thought that's kind of nice. Absolutely. Like it's good one. now, but maybe when your dreams come true, the indenting will happen automatically. I like that. Uh -huh, I like your uh -huh, thinking. Uh -huh. So yeah, hopefully this is setting the stage for some really cool yes. things, some additional yeah. stuff later, but uh, it's certainly a good start and an uh, improvement on where we were before with the DAX editor. Definitely for those who don't have any mice and they live in that touchpad, Yeah, and you know you would love all these extra keyboard shortcuts, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> all right, so what do we got next? So we <laughs> switching gears here. We're going to go more back end here. We're going to go into the query editor, actually. Okay. And we've had some enhancements there, some that are pretty neat. Um, Kind of like we're talking about distribution and looking at things like that. Okay. Um, so kind of uh, column profiling or being able to yeah. get, a, get a distribution, like you said, of the data. Absolutely. Okay. And at first, you know, uh, even when we open this, when you see it, you might look and be like, oh, well, they added a, a pretty line under yeah. the columns. And you're going to notice it. You're going to see it. But the line means something. Yeah. Right? It's pretty cool. It's pretty powerful. <clears throat> but this is where we can go and dive into the column and get additional details for us without having to go through this. We're talking about things like getting distincts, uniques, uh, how many uh, nulls, basically, mm -hmm. how many errors are there. You know, mm -hmm. like those times when you do a data type change, it goes through, but you want to make sure right. that everything did data type change instead of hitting close and apply and getting that message. Right. You can see it. Now, it's important to note 
that these features do work within the preview of the data. Ah, good point. So it's not going to go and uh, kind of give you a list of all your errors. If you have a million records, it's not going to kind of do that scan through all of it. Right. You are going to kind of get that encounter when you close and apply. Okay. But it's something here that at least gets us a little bit extra. And seeing yeah. the distribution is, is quite nice. And speaking of preview, this feature and the next one we're about to show is also still in preview. Yes. So if you want to test this out, you'll, of course, need to go to the File and Options inside the Power BI desktop and, mm -hmm. and turn them on. Yep, yep, yep. All right, well, let's take a look at the first one here, the column profiling options. So like Manuel mentioned, we're going to be working inside the query editor. So I'm going to go over to Edit Queries. And I already have a few queries that I've brought into this data set. And uh, Manuel mentioned that there is a slight difference. You'll notice a change in the column headers. One, it's kind of changed the color of the header section, but you also notice this little blue bar below. You're going to learn more about oh, that yeah. here in a moment. But what we're going to do is to, to display this and to show this demo is we're going to go over to the sales territory table. If you go underneath the view menu now, you'll see that there's a section here. There's two options, one for the column distribution yep. and one for the column quality. Let's start with the column distribution here first. Bam. Ooh, so notice what we have here. So the column distribution yeah. now shows us distribution of our data. Not surprisingly, for the key columns, we have 11 distinct values. All 11 of those are unique. Yep. So that's not surprising. Uh, you'll also see with the most granular column in there, the sales territory region, that, that also has 11 unique values. But when you start to look at the hierarchy values here, like the country and the group, you can see that it tells you the number of distinct values. So you can count them up yourself. And A does count as a distinct value yep. here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There you go. And six of those are unique, meaning that they don't show up more than once. Mm -hmm. That would be these below here. So well, ones that we, don't. We're not unique. We are not unique. United, United States. States shows up more than once here. The same with the group. You can kind of get an idea of that. But I guess the question is, you know, how would you use this? What's the benefit of using this? And what I would think would be kind of interesting is, Maybe I want to see very quickly, and this is you know some for some quick uh, answers to yeah. some questions. Is I want to see which of my orders have had a certain number of quantity, or what's the let's say this, what's yeah. the total, the highest total number of line items I've had in an order, and if yeah. I want to validate that, I can go to something like sales, internet sales here, and go find my. Oh, let's try that again. It's holding on to my mouse here the sales order line number, mm -hmm. I can see the distribution of this column. It looks like there are no unique values. So that means there's no value in this column that has ever, uh, that, that's distinct. But I do have seven, and distinct is a bad phrasing there, basically that it doesn't show up more than once. Yeah, yeah. Uh, distinct, there's seven distinct values though. So if I were to do like a select distinct on this, if you were a, a SQL, T-SQL aficionado, mm -hmm. you would get seven values returned back, numbers one through seven. That tells me that there are seven distinct values in here, and then I likely haven't had more than seven line items on any particular order. Correct. But yeah. I also know that's happened at least more than once because the number seven is not unique here. Yep. So a kind of interesting thing. The other thing you'll notice here as you look at this is you can, when you hover above it, you do have some ability to do data transformations. So I can select something like remove duplicates here. I'll do it real quickly. And you'll see it will remove the duplicates on this data set to only bring me back a distinct list of values here. Okay, so it looks like we're getting that back there correctly. Yep. All right. So we'll go ahead and show you the next feature that we're going to look at. The next feature we're going to look at is the column quality. Column quality. And you can do both of these at the same time, by the way. So you can have both of them turned on and look at them at the same time. But let's focus in on column quality here for a moment. What column quality is going to show you is the, the percentage of values that are valid, have errors, and are empty, or, or another word for null here. So uh, valid just means the values came through, they have the appropriate data type, there were no errors in the data transformation step, so the M itself is fine. And we said uh, empty means that it's null, and then error obviously means that there was some issue during the data transformation step. And we do have a good example. If we sneak over to the product table here, we're going to see that that magic green line, yes. if we look under product subcategory, that correlates with what we are seeing here with this column quality. So even when this wasn't checked, checked gives us this more explicit representation with the percentage numbers. Right. But the lines there, that's what they are. So at a very quick glance, even without doing anything as part of this, you're going to know if something else is going on. In this case, we have 34% of the values in products of category key are blank. Or, and that's important, actually. It's not blank. It's null. Right. Which does bring me something. I'd actually probably like to see something added in here. Maybe a, a blank percentage, too, actually. Yeah, because we do have, I mean, literally the column right next to the one we're looking at, here's a bunch of blanks in both of mm -hmm. these. 
And those, those are not counted as empty. You can see nulls are what are counting as an empty here. Correct. So the, yeah, and, and like you're saying here, you can see in this little green bar, green mm -hmm. and black bar, that's 34% is the black, 65% is the green. You also see there is a transform you can do here as well. If I wanted to remove those empties, I could select that. That would remove any of the 34% of the empty values I have. That's going to change that to 0% now. And it added a transform here to my query to filter rows. So pretty cool little step in there that allows you to do those transformation pieces. Yeah, pretty fun, pretty neat. Now, this is that little present we were talking about. Yeah. This is the uh, little bit of extra. This is probably the, the, the most robust element of this release. You know, it does take, I think, a little more understanding, right? This is, this is a technology that we've seen in other <coughs> tools, like integration services. Right. We've seen this. But the term, which is always a fun one, it's called fuzzy matching, mm -hmm. right? So for, in this case, we're doing fuzzy merge. Okay. And the idea is we're just going to do lookups based off of that. Okay. Now, there are some additional options. We'll show them. There's <coughs> optional things in here. But the concept is we can kind of use, some people I've heard say it's like a dirty lookup, but the idea is if you have data quality issues, right? which we never usually do, but just, <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> just, just for you, we have created a demo example so you can get this idea. It's a very simplified example, but for those of you who are unfamiliar with this idea of fuzzy, fuzzy lookups, fuzzy grouping kind of an idea, you can understand what we mean. Yeah. We're looking for similarity is right. really the idea. And, and the, the term you'll use, you'll hear a lot, with this, and you'll see there's an option that relates to it is, is threshold. Yeah. So. All right, well, let's take a look. So I'm going to flip back over to our demo here. I'm going to kill the column quantity for now, and <clears throat> our column quality, excuse me. And the uh, two tables that we're going to work with for this example are the state table that I have. So I have a table that has a list of all of the states that are in my data set. And then underneath this uh, last table I have called trade show contacts. This has a list of contacts. These are actually people that you may know that work with us. And what's interesting about this is, I w let's say the example here is I, I was at a trade show. I was literally typing in or writing in the values for these individuals. And, you know, I make typos. I make mistakes. And you can see those mistakes here. I misspelled Florida. I didn't capitalize Michigan. So there's some things that I want to do to make sure that I can address the data quality problems here so that whenever I go to load this into my, my data set, it's going to be able to create a relationship for these. Because right yeah. now, if I were to do the relationship on, you know, the state column, Manuel would be excluded from my data set. So to fix this, what we can do is we can do, I'm going to start from the, actually, this is the table I want to start from. Uh, we're going to go up to the home ribbon, and we're going to go to do in merge queries up in the mm -hmm. top right. And I'm going to do this as a new one, just so you can kind of see a, a net new example here. But I'm going to do merge queries as new. And what we're going to do is we're going to merge our trade show contacts with our state table, our states table. And we're going to base it off of the state column. And when we select mm -hmm. those two, you can see on the bottom that it was able to find a match for two of the four, not surprisingly, because one it has a lower case, and then the other was just outright misspelled. But yep. we now have the ability to use, as you mentioned, the fuzzy matching comparison here. So if we use that fudgy, fu fudgy, <laughs> if we use that fuzzy matching to compare the merge, what it will do is it'll be able to still find and use some logic. And there's some ad additional settings we're not going to really dig into for a short video today. But there's some additional settings that you can do to turn on the thresholds or, or, or uh, adjust the thresholds to say a certain percentage of similarity yeah. has to be met before it'll do the merge. Things like that are things that you can turn on to be able to return back those results properly. Yep. In this case, I'm just going to do an inner join. And then just in case for those who are watching, uh, you you know, but Devon's saying I wouldn't be returned. Manuel and Nick wouldn't be returned in an inner join typically. Right. You might be thinking, oh, why don't I just do a left join? It still doesn't address the quality of the no. data because right. all we're going to get back is a null still for state. That's right. This is going to bring it all home, does it all together. I am going to be returned. I will not be lost. <laughs> you will not be lost. And That's I'll right. have the right state, the quality. That's right. And we'll see this here. All right. So with that checked, if I, that's all I had to do, by the way, is just do that. Hit OK now. We'll see that it's brought back our states table on the right-hand side. And if I expand this, I'm going to go ahead and bring back both those columns just so we can see a comparison. Mm -hmm. I can see it brought back the geography key here for me. So that's good. I, that means I know whenever I build my relationships inside the data model, I can relate it on geography key properly. And then it also brought back what the uh, proper state column name is. Mm -hmm. So I can see Florida brought back correctly for Manuel, and I can see Michigan brought back correctly for Nick Lee. So there's some nice things that are built in. This is great. It's addressed the data quality problem for mm -hmm. me here, and this would have worked across a much larger oh, yeah. uh, span as well. I just did a smaller example for this. 
Yep. And you could just, we could delete state column. And yep. guess what? We're merging this right back into our data. We're good to go. Exactly. That's the idea. If you're bringing in these new elements, you can kind of do a quality check, a comparison against, in this case, verifying states. Naturally, this could be done for other types of categorical data. Right. Um, but yeah, it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Yeah, and the only thing I really needed in this case was a reference table where I had what the correct value should look like. Yep. And then based on that, we were able to, you know, merge which, them together. Which is just in case it's really easy if, if you're newer. We have a geography table, so it's just a matter of we just duplicated that table and got right. a distinct list. That's it, which it already was distinct, but it's easy. Like yeah. there's a lot of things in place. Like I said it's that back end heavy lifting where this fuzzy logic really shines. Really, yeah. does a good job. Absolutely. Well, I think that's it for today, right? It is a little bit quicker, a little bit shorter, but I said some fun stuff. I think the winners here are going to be the keyboard individuals, yes. those people that live in the keyboard, because that's <clears> just going to be fun, and you're going to be typing. You're going to be Dax maniacs now. Yeah. Before they were Dax lunatics, now they're <laughs> maniacs. They're going to be I just like churning it, I it like out. It. So. Well, great. Well, hey, if you haven't already, we're, we're interested, actually, first of all, what you liked from mm -hmm. this uh, release. So put in the comments below. Let us know which things that you liked the most, which things you're hoping for to come out soon. Uh, you know, of course, subscribe to our channel. Make sure you get the updates by hitting the notification. That little bell. Yeah, that little bell. And uh, we'll sign it off from here. Again, I'm Devin Knight. Manuel Quintana. And thanks for joining us. Take care.